all that and more. Yeah, looking forward to a bit of a deep dive into the world of e-commerce for us here tonight. Let's have a little look and see what is coming up. We have got the editor-in-chief of Arabian Business joining us in the studio today, Mr. Matthew Amlot. And we're going to be talking about some of the biggest startups in the region that you definitely need to know about. And Amy in a warehouse. Go figure. She's actually gone down to the Brands for Less warehouse to check out their innovative robots. And listen up, all you Robbie Williams fans. We are giving away some tickets, so stay tuned. I mean, Tom, you must be excited. I am excited, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Listen, big focus for us tonight on all things e-commerce. So, looking forward to this one, because I've got this theory that a lot of people, and it's a question we ask quite a lot here mm -hmm. on the show, a lot of people come in, they talk to us about their new business ventures, they talk to us about their new initiatives, and the question we often ask is, would you have done this had you not lived in Dubai? And I think that is one of the sort of germs of success of this place. Have I got anything on that? I mean, definitely, like, the UAE is always a quick innovator and there's just so many ways that you can get involved, so many people to connect with as well, I think, do you work in the tech industry. Minds, connecting and talking about some things, you're going to go a lot further than in a place where maybe it's not that sort of tech-oriented. Yeah, the UAE is an absolutely incredible ecosystem. In fact, I was actually down at the London Business School and Astrolabs earlier this week where they were awarding the MENA Startups competition and all the startups had one thing to say that Dubai is the place to own a business and run a business and find a business uh, because of the ecosystem. And I think that's something we'll discuss with our guests uh, who, are, who are looking at this from a wide range, a device range of the business landscape at the moment. But a lot of people will go, oh, Dubai, part of the UAE, isn't it? It must be completely all about energy business and yet you think of how much startups e-commerce tech is contributing to the overall business landscape at the moment it's huge isn't it it's massive it's massive how many unicorns have we got coming out of the region we've got kareem talabat you know amazon came in and bought soup.com back then um so there's a lot happening here mm. but if you've even got businesses like e-car and u-drive which I, i'm sure they exist outside but i haven't seen them anywhere else except right here in the uae that you can just rent a car with your phone just leave it, well, not anywhere, but most places, and just carry on your dates. And it's incredible. Yeah. Almost anywhere. I think <laughs> it's episodes like this that make me feel a little bit inferior in life. You know, as we sit here, read our articles, and talk about our life in media, and you've got all these successful uh, business entrepreneurs coming in talking about I mean, about we're all settings. part of the machine. Fine. Yeah, we're helping. We're contributing, right? Yeah, we're we won't be replaced off. anytime soon. Continue AI's not coming that fast, hopefully. Well, let's speak to one of these very <laughs> incredible entrepreneurs. We're going to have our guest co host joining us very soon. But who is is our guest co-host. Hi, I'm Donna Benton, the founder and CEO of The Entertainer. I'm super excited to be your co-host today, so catch me later on the show. And we will find out what Donna has been up to in just a few minutes. Before that, let's take a deep dive into the e-com landscape. Here are five UAE-based startups that you don't want to miss. Dubai is a hub for innovation and technological advancements. In the heart of the desert, e-commerce has taken root, providing residents and visitors alike with seamless solutions at their fingertips. Here are five Dubai-based e-commerce startups that are changing the game. Stars Play is an entertainment platform that streams movies, TV shows, and live events. While it has a vast library of Hollywood films and series, it's most proud of its hyper-local content. Its original horror series, Caboose, became the number one show in the Middle East and North Africa within 48 hours. Acquired by Uber to the tune of 3.1 billion U.S. dollars in 2019, Kareem became the first unicorn in the region. What originally started as a ride-hailing service has changed how people move around in Dubai. Since then, it has branched into an everything app, offering food and groceries delivery, courier and money transfer services, and many more. Created by two friends in 2005, Dubizzle started as a classifieds website. It quickly became a go-to platform for expats to buy and sell cars, furniture and other items, as well as look for jobs. Dubizzle and property listing website Bayut merged in 2020, with the company achieving unicorn status. 
Kitopi is a cloud kitchen platform in the UAE. Food businesses in the country rely on it to cook, pack and send out their dishes to customers. Earlier this year, it acquired food and beverage group AWJ in what's believed to be one of the largest transactions in the region. Noon is an online retailer for everything, electronics, clothes, groceries, beauty products and many more. It's definitely stepped up the delivery game with its offering Noon Minutes, which promises delivery in 15 minutes. It's also dominating the fashion retail space. It bought out Namshi earlier this year for 335 million US dollars. These are just five e-commerce companies thriving and changing the game in Dubai and beyond. There are many more startups solving problems and making our lives more convenient. And you'll be hearing about them on DXP Today. Yeah, amazing to see so many different ideas there. All just looking to disrupt the market at the moment. So many disruptors when it comes to all things retail. Right. Uh, talking of disruptors, influencers, pioneers, game changers. Time now for us to introduce properly our next guest, who founded her company when she was in her early 20s. In fact, it was back in the early 2000s as well, transitioning the business from a simple book of offers to a 100% e-commerce app that has become a household name here in the region. It is synonymous with the UAE. Please welcome the founder and the CEO, again, of The Entertainer, and of course, the Benton Group as well, Donna Benton, DB. Good to see you. Good to see you, Tom. Thank you for having me. Look, I have done that an awful <laughs> justice there. I've tried to put this extraordinary story um, of personal striving and success into a couple of seconds, and I'm not sure I've done it properly. Oh, so you've done a great job. Can you, can you sort of add a few bit more pieces to it? Can you put a bit of flesh on the bones for us there Ooh, in terms of okay. the journey? So, high level, I started The Entertainer when I was 26. It was a book, as you said. There was only a diner's club at that point with a 10% off. So I thought if I could create value in the form of a buy one, get one free, valid for lunch, valid for dinner, seven days a week, then hopefully it would work. And so at that time I went out to all the restaurants, the cafes, the night spots, the attractions, the beauty salons, and literally that's how the entertainer started. So I started with me in my uh, internet cafe, in fairness, <laughs> uh, because Media City wasn't there, so I was allowed one year free rent <laughs> when I had my license. And then we grew over 15, uh, we grew to over 15 countries, 10,000 merchants and um, 300 staff in 17 years. I did two acquisitions. I sold 50% in 2012, and then we became also digital. Um, book and app at that stage and then I did another one in 2018 and then I was thinking what do I do now and that's when I started the Benton Group yep. and during that time I invested in companies like the Sunset Group which is an F&B company Sushi Samba etc yeah. Sushi Samba etc Aura and then I started Kaha Kapo a swimwear line so coming from Australia we love swimwear it was a totally different space I'd never been in it before and created Kaha Kapo so I was doing that and it was only three months ago <laughs> that the chairman came back to me from the entertainer and said, um, would you come back? And you said? And I said, yes. So, Amazing. Oh, I mean, wow. I feel like we're sitting here with a celebrity. I mean, we are sitting here with a celebrity because I came here to the UAE in about 2018. First thing I heard, pretty much, do you have the entertainer? Have you got oh, the entertainer? Oh, it's on entertainer, this and that. So how long did it take to get to that household name level? Yeah, look, my first challenge was um, when I first launched that, people thought it was too good to be true. How can I go to Wild Wadi and buy one, get one free? So it was actually educating people that it was real. So that, that, was, that was a challenge. But look, to be honest, it was a year or two years when the ball started um, rolling and, and really um, people understanding it and the merchants were actually receiving um, vouchers and things. And then when we became digital, that was a big game changer then because then it's the data, demographic, then you could get both and we went into um, Africa, Europe, Asia, and all the Middle East. Wow. Incredible. So 
digital transformation is like so prevalent now, it's such a hot topic and a buzzword, right? But you went digital in 2012, so you had an app since 2012. We did. So how was that at that time going into the digital space as a, as a UAE-based business? Well, to be honest, it was quite scary <laughs> <laughs> because the book was so good and everyone knew the book. And I'm like, is, digital's the dark art. Mm. That's the thing. If you don't know it, you can, oof, it can, it can go everywhere. So the key is to obviously have a good team and we had to try and test it so we kept the print product at the same time that we launched the app at the same time and a lot of people wanted us to do it a year or two beforehand mm -hmm. but I said no we just weren't ready to do it so we really had to be ready to do the launch and we were uh, we actually did Asia first because Asia were very digital savvy mm -hmm. and then we did um, the GCC yeah, the idea born here of course uh, created here born here and then obviously as you said you've expanded across uh, multiple territories around the world I suppose that age-old question a big focus on e-commerce and the tech revolution here but also the e-commerce thing within Dubai. Would this have happened had you not been in Dubai? How much of a role has Dubai played? It's played a lot, in fairness. I mean, I'm Australian. We already had products like this in Australia. When I came to Dubai, it was 2000. So there was nothing really like this. Mm -hmm. So I saw a niche in the market and, and I went for it. I mean, Donna, like you say, you started it when you were 26. You had a, so much success. I think nobody would have faulted you if you had sold 50% and just chilled out. So. <laughs> what is it that motivates you to start like Kaha Kapo, for example? Is it just a thrill for entrepreneurship? Yeah, no, I think, firstly, I love a challenge. I love, I love doing startups. I love a challenge. I love achieving something. So I think, I think that's really what it is. It's going back to the entertainer now. It, it's not about the money. It's, it's about in my DNA. And I really love the fact that I can save people money and I can make the unaffordable affordable for people at the same time creating business, uh, creating business for the merchants. Well, it's all about e-commerce today and we've got so much of that coming up right after the break.